Hello, hello. So today in this video, I wanted to paint another of my fa one of my favorite flowers, the peony. So the peony is this gorgeous flower with a ton of petals and uh, it's, it's very similar to a rose, but just a little bit more wild and fluffy. I've got this uh, vintage peony book here, which has a ton of beautiful peony um, illustration. And um, they, they, they're just so, they're all the different varieties we have here. And this one's the one I'm going to paint today. So I pink, picked a really nice pinky, neon pinky rose, which is very similar to um, what a traditional Chinese peony painting might have. Um, so let's get started and hope you can join me and paint along. Let's, let's go. Right, let's get started straight away. Looking at a beautiful uh, peony reference illustration. Um, we're going to try to recreate this and I love it because it's got a lot of beautiful bright pink. It actually reminds me a bit about like the, the Chinese Asian way of painting peonies. Um, peonies are very, very popular in uh, the Chinese art um, paintings, uh, traditional Chinese paintings. So uh, let's get started. Just gonna put my book up here. Um, let's talk a bit about the supplies I'm using today. So for paper, I'm gonna use my Saunders Waterford um, 10 by seven inches block. And it's almost done here. I like this paper. I really like the texture actually. Um, it's got a nice roughness, nice toothiness. It's just a bit on the creamier side, not super white, um, but that's fine. Um, let's go, I'm gonna use my three quarter inch Princeton Heritage brush, flat brush. And I probably will use uh, this thinner four, size four silver black velvet um, round as well. Okay, we're gonna keep things simple today. I've got my tube paints, my two glasses of water. Let's go. Spraying down my paints. I've already sprayed them once, just doing it again so it gets nice and activated. Cool, so I'm gonna make it a little bit dramatic, okay? I'm gonna just explode this peony off the page. So I'm gonna start with the stamens today, actually. So looking at my reference photo, uh, there's a bit of darkness of uh, picking a permanent rose to just get a bit of that center going. And then after that, I just realized I'm using this brush, I didn't tell you, a size six round. It's, I just, you know, make last minute decisions all the time. Okay, now I'm just gonna take a bit of my yellow and just dot it around that pink. And there's a bit of bleeding going on here and that might not turn out nice. So I'm just gonna soak a little bit off so it's not too bleedy. Okay, so I have a nice center going. Now I can pull up some petals grabbing my opera rose and making a nice mixture of that. As you can see, I don't mix my colors beforehand. I mix them on the go and that's just how I roll. Grabbing that not so thick, not so thin, to pull out that first petal from the middle, dragging a bit of that yellow out and creating petals of different sizes. Maybe going in with a darker permanent rose here to do this petal. Don't worry so much about how each individual petal uh, folds. Don't get intimidated by that. Just create like a basic shape using your reference photo. I'm going in to just place a few of the back petals, leaving a bit of white space. And here I'm just gonna let this petal go off the page. 
I usually paint with a larger paper, uh, but this time I just, you know, just use what I have. And um, that means I can play with a bit of just an extra large painting going out of the page. So you see, I've used different values, some with just a, a, a heavier pigmented wash and some slightly less. What I'm doing now is I'm just going in with my darker permanent rose to just drop in some darker bits, some of the petals, washing off my brush with water and then with really just that tiny bit of water, create some further back petals. Okay. Is it looking very weird and off now? It's fine. Just stop before you want to stop. Usually that works for me, okay? <laughs> um, that's my big hero flower here, the main one. And I'm going to do just one above here. Maybe I'll just do two. So back to my um, size six round, going into that permanent rose. Actually, I'm going to go into the green, a green center. So using a bit of olive green I have here, you can use whatever green you like, sap green, olive green, your favorite green that you use for your flowers. And then into the cadmium yellow to create that stamen around the green. All right, so this flower is slightly facing up this way. Okay, so you're gonna like kind of point your strokes in the general direction of where the flower is pointing to. Flat brush, same deal, grabbing your pink. So I'm using Opera and Permanent Rose. One is a brighter, crazy neon one, and one is a deeper, darker, purpley one. So let's pull this one out here. Okay. And then maybe one up here. Touching a bit of the center. Dipping into that pink to create that bottom petal. Oops. There we go. I'm always doing that. Don't worry, just leave that for now. That one down here. Washing off and then maybe creating the bottom petal to touch the other flower a tiny bit. And then one petal sticking out here like this. using a dryer brush to just mop up a bit of the excess water. Um, and happy with that flower, leave it alone. Okay, so now while the flowers are a bit wet, I'm gonna go and grab my, let's see. Let's keep with a flat brush. I'm gonna use my half inch flat and grabbing some green. So having a set green here and mixing it into my dirty palette where I have my leftover green from before. And I'm just gonna pull a nice long stem down and then one up for the leaves. Here, same. Pulling up stems from the flowers is perhaps one of the most satisfying thing that I enjoy while painting flowers because it's like, you know, you're working on the flowers, you're working on the blossoms and then finally 
you provide that little bit of contrasting green and you're like, ah, oh, satisfying. Okay, so the, these peony leaves are perfect for this brush, okay? Because I'm using the edge of this flat brush and just pulling out the leaves that I see in my reference photos. And not worrying about the different um, hues of green at the moment. Just getting up some nice peony leaves. Now, oh, take a breath. Always take a nice long exhale. <laughs> I'm gonna go into uh, Azo Green, which is a green gold from M. Graham. Oh, this green gold is just so nice. I'm running out of this green gold, so I need to get a new tube soon. Uh, but as you can see, it just brings a little bit of special glamour. Pulling out a couple more leaves, um, going behind the previous leaves is a way to just create dimension. And uh, watercolor is so forgiving in the sense that it's okay to just go behind, go across, go through the petals. It makes it actually kind of just really um, soft, that softness, giving it that nice soft feel. And then step back and look at your composition, look at your flowers. Obviously, this bit here has, is in that stage now where it's quite damp. So you don't want to go in with any more pigment here. I mean, you can and experiment and do what you like, but I choose to just let it rest. And um, we're just going to stop right here and then wait for it to dry. And then we can go back in with just a little bit of layering. All right, coming back to my painting. It's really nice and dry now. Now, you know, you can always stop at this stage. And if you feel like this is finished for you, um, go ahead. And uh, I feel like it's really pretty now, but I just can't help it. But just add a little bit of definition into the blooms here. So these are the couple of brushes that I use for um, for my layering. I like the nice little pointy ones for silver black velvet, a thin liner brush, and even this uh, half inch flat. So feeling like I want to start with this one, size four, round silver black velvet. I'm going to go into the same pink I use, permanent rose here. And uh, just gonna go and mix that a little bit with a bit of purple. Okay, so just to darken that a tad. And then from here, from the middle, just gonna pull up some shadows. Some veins from the middle of the flower. This part is still uh, very much a learning curve for me. Um, and I encourage you to just play, feel, feel and play. Look at your reference and uh, making marks where you feel would be a good place to make that mark. Letting your brush just dance around, finding the spot between play and actually, you know, attempting to make a beautiful picture. 
you know, as much as I love um, a lot of the art therapy and those sort of places where and activities where you can explore your fun side of painting and just go crazy and make a mess. I do find that there is value in a goal and an attempt to create something beautiful. Learning composition, learning balance. Um, it gives me a sense of a deeper purpose not not saying that free play is, is is wrong or bad there's a place for those things uh, but <coughs> having a goal to create something beautiful is a big big part of of why i create i like that i'm gonna stop so you notice i just used two different kind of pink hues i don't want to create something too complicated this morning. Going on to this one here. There is little meth, um, what's the saying? I cannot describe to you why I'm putting a mark here or there. I am Seeing and then feeling and then moving. Okay, so gonna leave it. That was quick, that was easy, that was a beautiful little trance that I went into just to just flow. To make those um, marks okay so i'm gonna go and put a bit of green into this flower here into both my centers actually because um there's always a bit of green in the middle of the peony i like that and shall i do a bit in the leaves i think i should so using my slightly thicker eight size eight I'm going to grab a darker green, perline green or shadow green. Might even just bring a bit of that permanent rose into that green. And just darkening some of the leaves. What I've learned over the years of painting is that the eye likes contrast. So to have something light and then dark creates depth. Um, okay, stepping back now to just have a quick look at what's happening. I'm feeling these two marks are a little bit too uh, symmetrical so I'm just gonna soften this one down here and maybe just add a little bit here okay I'm done it is done I'm calling it done there you have it my loose peonies pinky bright Expressive, fun. Cool, so there we did it. Um, our beautiful pink peonies painted in a loose abstract style with a bit of layering, a bit of detail. I, I simply love it. I actually am not used to painting in such a small scale anymore. I do like painting large. But for these videos, I thought um, I'll keep things simple for now. And um, I, I really love how these turned out. And if you have painted along with me, tag me on Instagram. I'm at Crystal Tan Art. And I'd love to see your, your version of it. Um, and if you like this video, please like 
please subscribe, please leave me a comment. I um, really wanna uh, grow this channel and I've actually really enjoy um, painting and talking and describing the flow and how I, 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 I enjoy the whole process. So um, be, what do I wanna say? Oh yeah, just tell me in the comments as well if there's anything you wanna see more of on my channel, um, what kind of flowers you like to see me paint, uh, my supplies, any questions you have. So uh, yeah, that's it today. Thanks.